Hey everyone, today we're going to be making phone cases, as ChatGDP said this would be a popular video, so let's see if that's true. Anyways, the phone cases I'll be showing you how to model in Blender, and you can easily 3D print them. This also allows you to easily adjust your case so that you can have custom looking phone cases. Also, this could work with any phone model, though I will be using an XS in this tutorial. And if you want to edit the template so you can immediately start creating your own custom look, then it will be on my website, assuming it's out by the time you're watching this video. Check the link in the description. If you happen to already have a template, skip here to see easy ways to customize it. Otherwise, let's get the dimensions of the phone. In my case, for the XS, it has a width of 79.9 millimeters, a height of 143.6 millimeters, and 7.7 millimeters in depth. If your phone is an iPhone, then you sh can easily find it on the Apple website. Probably the same for Android, though I haven't checked. Now that we have the dimensions, we can get into Blender and set the unit scale to 0 0.001, and to millimeters instead of meters. By the way, the unit scale just fixes scaling issues that may occur when putting the object from Blender into the slicer. Okay, so to start, we need to select that cube that I may or may not have deleted, and then enter the correct dimensions that we just got. Though you do need to add an extra 0.1 millimeters, otherwise there will not be enough room for your phone to actually fit and slide into the phone case. Okay, so now that we have the correct dimensions, we need to hit Command A, otherwise this next step that we're going to do will not work. And when you hit Command A, you need to hit Scale. Now let's go into Edit Mode. You can do this by hitting Tab, then if you want to get this view that I have right here, then I hit 1, Shift Z for wireframe, and just selected the edges with Edge Select Mode. Then, I hit Command I to invert that selection so that I'm only selecting the top edges. With these top edges, you can hit Command B for bevel and hit click anything, and then you'll see a little pop-up window, and you can change these dimensions to, of the bevel to 3. Again, these dimensions will be different depending on the bevel of your phone. Now you could select only the top view and hit Shift Z, and select only these edges. With those edges selected, you can again hit Command B to bevel it, and this time the value is 10, at least for this phone. Now we can again go to the side view, and a little bit after it's starting to already bend inward, you can select a row of those edges and extrude them upward with E. Make sure it's a little bit over the what the phone initially was. The higher you want, the more it, the phone case will stick out, or the less the phone will stick out if you don't go far enough. Now hit Command I to invert the selection and deselect the edges below the area that we just excluded. I accidentally went a little too high and had a leftover area when I deleted those faces and edges, so I just selected those edges that I missed and deleted them as well. It should be a hollow phone once you're done. Or at least appear to be. Okay, so now that we have this part done, we can add the solidify modifier. And with the solidify modifier, make sure to change the mode to complex. Then for the thickness, you can change it to 2.5 or at least anywhere from 2 millimeters to 4 millimeters, according to Google though that still seems kind of thick, so really whatever thickness you want. Then I would recommend increasing the merge distance, because otherwise you have this weird little seam line that doesn't seem to go away until you increase the merge distance a decent ways. Just don't go too far, otherwise it makes your model look kind of weird. Okay, so now all we need to do to finish the template is add the spots for the holes, which is honestly kind of annoying and just involves a lot of measuring for your phone, because all you really need to do is add that cube and do what we did to create this template, or at least the original dimensions, entering those dimensions in, and then you bevel the edges so that it is more of a pill shaped. Anyways, I will tell you the dimensions for the excess, but for those of you who don't have them, you'll need to measure all these holes. Okay, so for the main camera hole, the X dimension is 12 millimeters, the Y is 26. 
For the side button, the smaller side button, it is 4 millimeters for the X, and the Y is 22. For the larger one, it is again 4 millimeters for the X, and 40 millimeters for the Y. For the ending area for the chargers and speakers, the X dimension is 5.96249 millimeters, or you could just round that if you want. And the Y is 43.2 millimeters. Okay, that was a lot of dimensions, but you also need the location dimensions as well. Though, for the camera hole cutout, I actually got these wrong the first time and realized there was another way. For those of you who don't want to do all these dimensions, you can just find images of whatever phone you're using and scale it to the same size as the template and then add the cube and make sure it fits with that image. This did end up working for me to fix my dimensions, which I will give to you on screen right now for the XS, though that was just another option. Otherwise, yeah, you can find all these dimensions manually. Once you do have all the hole cutouts, make sure the dimension that is just going into the phone is deep enough to go through the entire phone, and it should be good. Then select them all, hit M to move them to a collection. I just named it hole cutouts. And then you can add a boolean modifier to the template and select collection in the boolean modifier and then select that collection we just created. This should create all the whole cutouts, assuming your faces are flipped the right direction. Okay, so now we got the template done. That was quite a bit. But luckily, editing it doesn't really take that much. All you need to do is literally add something like a cube, delete all the edges but one, and hit extrude until you have a design that you like. In this case, this weird big hole cutout. And once you do have it, I decided to add subdivision and add some loop cuts so that it was a little bit sharper. Then I applied the subdivision modifier, selected the top and bottom edges, hit fill, and added a boolean modifier, and cut this big hole out. And that's really all I need to do to customize it. I ended up doing this with a couple more phone case designs, one with this hexagon that I used that array modifier a couple times, and got this design. And then another with this funky, weird pattern, using the same method as I just showed you. It is worth mentioning that you can also do this with text, though if you do decide to add text, you will need to convert it to a mesh after you've extruded it a bit, and then you'll also need to hit remesh, or add the remesh modifier so that it's a little bit better geometry, as text geometry may cause failures with the boolean modifier. But once you do get that working, you can use the same technique with text and whatever thing that you actually decide you want. Once you have the design that you want, you can hit N and then hit export if you have the 3D print toolbox add-on enabled, and then you can put it in the slicer and actually put it on the printer. And once it's done printing, you get the satisfaction of doing this. <laughs> yeah, I didn't need to be that harsh, but I thought it was kind of funny. And then I printed a couple other phone cases, and here's how they turned out. Let me know which one is your favorite. I personally quite like the hexagon one and the blue one. Though, to be fair, I guess the red one was just a template, so that I could see how this worked. Well, anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and for those of you wondering why I didn't use geometry nodes to create this phone case, eh, the main reason comes down to the fact that the bevel modifier doesn't exist quite yet, so it would have been way more difficult. Anyways, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you later. Bye!